Welcome to Kingdoms, where all your nerdy dreams come true. This is the 12th episode of Season 3 of the Diamond Commander League. We play high power EDH with a few deck building restrictions to keep it interesting. Our only banned card is Thassa's Oracle. For episodes 10, 11, and 12, the restrictions are to play a commander from the Adventures in the Forgotten Realms set. Have at least 10 Adventure in the Forgotten Realms cards in your deck, and to exclude sorceries from your deck. The players are not required to follow these restrictions, but it is encouraged. With that, let's check out our commanders in our decks for our games today. First, we have Carlos playing Galea, Kindler of Hope. In this deck, I'm doing what I always warn against, and that is dividing up my forces. This build has auras, equipment, aura creature removal or control, and aura and equipment focused creatures. If there is any one goal, it is to get advantage from playing cards from the top of the deck and equipping for free. Being an adventurer is being prepared for anything. My starting hand includes Finhorn Elves, Path to Exile, Shram Senior Edificer, Knight of the Reliquary, Fabled Passage, Grasslands, and Corrupted Conscience, Mulligan to the bottom. Second, we have Ben playing Oswald Fiddlebender. In this deck, Ben is jam-packed it full of all kinds of artifacts that Oswald can use for his pseudo-birthing pod into many different combo wins. Hopefully next time we do a D&D set, Oswald gets a vehicle card for his airship. His starting hand includes Esper Sentinel, Giver of Ruins, Path to Exile, Damping Sphere, Basalt Monolith, Command Beacon, and a Snow-Covered Plains. Third, we have Jordan playing Karzakar the Eye Tyrant. In this deck, Jordan has many different effects that can take advantage of Karzakar's Goad ability. His main goal is to control the board and force his opponents to kill each other and then swoop in at the end and for the final attack. In his obsession over the maze engine, Karzakar forgot to watch out for a dwarf and his hammer. Jordan's starting hand includes Dockside Extortionist, Chromatic Lantern, Hellish Rebuke, Phyrexian Arena, Bloodstained Mire, Command Tower, and a Mountain. Fourth, we have Jeff playing Meek's Beloved Ranger. In this deck, Jeff is playing a variation of Stax Birthing Pod that you can see in a lot of CDH decks. He uses Mink's ability to kill his creatures that have effects upon death. If needed, he can make a big boo and attack too. A den of stinking evil! Cover your nose, boo! We will leave no crevice untouched! Jeff's starting hand includes Altar of the Brood, Bird of Paradise, Utopia Sprawl, Collector Oof, Smothering Tithe, Windswept Heath, and a Mountain. With that, let's play some magic. I will draw a card. Play Grasslands, tapped, and pass the turn. Draw for turn. I will play a, a Snow Covered Plains, and then I'll tap to play Esper Sentinel. With that, I will pass. Untap. Draw. Fled Stain Mire. I'll go ahead and crack it, search for my Shock Land, put it into play tapped, and pass the turn. I'm going to play out Windswept Teeth. I'm going to crack that as well, losing a life. I'm going to go search for Temple Garden. I'm going to tap it. I'll bring it to play untap. Two for that. I will play my birds. That I will pass. Untap. Draw for turn. I'm going to play Fabled Passage. I'm going to crack these. This will come in tapped, but this one will be shocked in. And then I'm going to play a Fin Torn Elves with the mana and then i will be done so I'll, I'll now go search for those two lands untap drop and i will snow covered plains and i'm going to tap to cast my commander oswald and then with that i will pass untap upkeep draw i am going to play a command tower and i will pass my turn Untap, draw, pay one, play Altar of the Brood, and pay an additional one for Sentinel. That is it for me. On tap, draw for turn. So I'll play Knight of the Reliquary for three. Just pass the turn. I will untap, off for turn. I'll play a Command Beacon. I'll follow it up with a Dampening Sphere. It says if a land is tapped for two or more mana, it produces one colorless instead of any other type in amount. And then each spell a player casts costs one colorless more to cast for each other spell that player has cast this turn. Fast turn. Untap. Upkeep. Draw. I'll go ahead and play a Swamp for turn. Tap out for a Phyrexian Arena. Trigger the Esper. I cannot pay. So go ahead and draw your one card. And I will pass the turn. 
untap, draw, play Lotus Petal, and I will pay one for Esper Sentinel, and then you will all mill one card from Altar of the Brute. With that, I will pass my turn. Untap, draw, finally drew land. Prismatic Vista, I'll crack it. Take a little damage. According to this hand, I should get another planes. I'll play Shram. I'll pass the turn. I will untap and draw off for turn. I'll tap one to play Giver of Runes. I will tap my other one and tap Oswald, Damping Sphere, a three mana value artifact, put it onto the battlefield. So I'm gonna put Archaeomancer map. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, if that player controls more lands than I do, I may put a land from my hand onto the battlefield. So I'll play a land for turn and then I will the turn. Untap, upkeep. Trigger for Exion Arena, I will draw a card and lose one life. Then I'll go ahead and draw four turn. I will play a Mountain. I don't know how good it is, but I'm gonna try it. War Tool. Whenever an opponent taps land for mana, tap all lands that player controls. Whenever a creature an opponent controls attacks, all creatures must attack if able. With that, I will pass my turn over to Jeff. Tap, draw. I will play a Sacred Foundry untapped. Each of you are gonna mill a card. I'm gonna tap birds for a green, play out you. Topia Sprawl, attaching it to the Temple Garden. I'm gonna choose white. I will tap the Temple Garden for a green and a white, and then a mountain, and then I will play my commander. Don't forget to tap that Sacred Foundry. Oh yeah, sorry, my Sacred Foundry is trapped, thank you. Other than that, I am done. One thing I missed, sorry, mill two. I mill- Flight steal. <laughs> Flight steal. It, it shuffled back into my library. End of turn, I am going to sacrifice this planes to Knight of Reliquary. Get rid of this planes and go get a Hall of Heliods, whatever. Then to play, path to exile the Esper Sentinel and pay the one. So I get to look for a basic land to put it on tapped, right? Yeah, I draw for turn, I'll pay three mana, taps all my mana, play Ancestral Mask. I'm gonna target Shram. Gets, gets plus two, plus two for each other enchantment on the battlefield. Plus four, uh, plus this is each the, uh, other, so plus four, plus four. Don't forget, Jeff has that Utopia Sprawl. Oh yeah, plus six, plus six. And cast trigger, I'll draw a card. I will not attack with Knight of the Reliquary this turn and sack a Plains to go get a Plains. <laughs> but it comes in untapped. I'll get a Hollowed Fountain, take the two. I really need this next one to be a land. Oh, well, there we go. I'm keeping it there, because I'm immediately casting all that glitters. So I'll draw that Misty Rainforest. I guess I will target Finned Horn Elves, actually. And I'll play the Misty Rainforest for land for turn. I will attack Jordan for some damage. So five total, but it gets only not for itself. So eight and then the two two, so 10 damage. And I'll pass the turn. Okay, so I untap, draw for turn. I'm gonna play a Ganjo Castle for my land. I'm going to pay one and tap Oswald. I'm gonna sacrifice our Kaomancer's map and find something with a mana value of four. All right, so Solemn Simulacron's gonna come out. And when he enters, I may search for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield. I'm gonna tap four and cast Valkmira, Protector's Shield. If a source and opponent controls would deal me damage, it deals one less. Whenever me or a permanent I control become the target of a spell, I counter that spell or ability unless they pay one. With that, I will pass the turn. Don't forget to tap that last plane, please. Wars Toll, if you tap any lands, all of them get oh, tapped. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Untap, keep. I'm gonna trigger my Phyrexian Arena, draw a card for it, and then draw for turn. Ancient Tomb. I'm going to tap two for a dock sided extortionist, and I believe there are seven artifacts out there. So I will get myself seven treasure tokens, and then I am going to use one token. So I'll go down to six and take two damage to cast my commander, Parazakar. Whenever you attack a player, tap target creature that player controls and goads it. Meaning that until your next turn, that creature attacks each combat if able and attacks a player other than me if able. And then whenever an opponent attacks another one of my opponents, you and the attacking player each draw a card and lose a life. And that is gonna do it for me. Pass the turn. Tapping, drawing, 
I'm gonna tap all of this lands down here. I'm gonna play Smothering Tithe. Yeah, no one. Yeah, no one, no one. Going to tap my birds and sacrifice my Lotus Petal for a red. I'm gonna play a Collector Oaf. Please, please no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to have a response to Collector Oof being cast. I'm going to sack two treasures and float black, black. Oof can come into play. Another mill? Before my mana goes, I'm going to yep. use Baleful Mastery on the Collector Oof to exile it. Then I'm going to target Ben to draw a card. Fantastic, thank you. All right, yeah, I'm going to attack with Boo and Minsk at Carlos. We will both draw a card and lose one life. I am done with my turn. Should have already done this. I apologize. Misty Rainforest for one life. We'll get Canopy Vista. Draw for turn. As a result of that, I will create a treasure and you will all mill one. I'm down with the milling thing. This gets plus 10, plus 10. Those are six enchantments. I'm going to send the Shram at Jeff. A okay, Knight of the Reliquary will go at Jordan. And the Elf will go... I don't want to take the chance of it dying, so I'm going to send it at Jeff as well. Any blocks? Well, first trigger. Card is a card. We both draw and lose a life. So we mill two? Yep, I'm going to get two treasures, and you have both. everyone else will mill two. No blocks or...? Yes, Dockside is definitely jumping in front of that Knight. <laughs> okay. And then, Jeff, anything before I damage? I don't have anything, so no. So I'm taking 15 total. Okay. I will now go to second main and attempt a control magic on Kara Zakar. I have nothing to stop that. You're going to control so, Kara Zakar. So cast trigger, I'll draw a card, I won't pay, and you'll mill us. I will pass the turn. I will untap, draw off turn. Everyone mills one. I'll play a land for turn. I will tap one to tap them all. That'll give me seven white mana. Six here, one and one. And then I'm going to use one of them. So this is a colorless. This is white. And I'm going to do my thing with Solemn Simulacron. He dies, so I will draw a card. Not pay for it. Mill. And then I'll find an artifact with mana cost five. Stuffy Doll. <laughs> Stuffy Doll is a janky creature. He's a zero one, but he's indestructible. He enters the battlefield. I'm going to choose a Jordan. And then... Whenever he's dealt damage, I deal that much damage to chosen player. And then I can tap it to deal one damage to itself. I'm going to use six of the mana to cast Worm Coil Engine. I'm going to use the last floating white mana, Path to Exile Mix and Boo. Well, Mix, I guess. And I will pass the turn. <laughs> At the beginning of your end step, I am going to stack all four of my treasure tokens and hurl through hell Stuffy Doll. So exile target creature. Until the end of my next turn, you may cast that card and you may spend mana as though it's mana of any color to cast it. I will cast Chromatic oh, Lantern. Did I miss the draw? Oh yeah, I drew two cards. We're just giving Jeff the game. Mill two, by Dude, the way. Dude, guys, we, we, we legit are. I will then tap out and I will cast Ben Stuffy Doll. And I will pass the turn. So who's the target? I mean, oh, I you, you know Carlos. That. I'm definitely targeting you. I knew it. I'm going to tap. Uh, I gave him treasures, but I only have four lands, you guys. Come on. I will play Misty Rain. I'm going to bend two of my treasures. I'm going to play Grand Abolisher. Then we are going to recast Meats for five of the treasures. Five more treasures. There's two creatures coming in for technically with Meats because another Boo will trigger and a Grand Abolisher. So there's three mills there, by the way. I am going to go to attack. I'm going to attack with Boo at Jordan and Birds also at Jordan. With the trigger on the stack is my last treasure to play Enlightened Tutor. I go get Pattern of Rebirth, get card trigger to resolve. Yeah, we both draw a card, lose a life. And then box from Jordan. I will block with my Stuffy Doll. Your Boo It's a zero one. So Boo doesn't even die. <laughs> nope, Boo does not even die. I take I one. one damage to Carlos. For second main, I'm just going to dump it all in. So I'll use four of that with a red floating to play a Pattern of Rebirth onto Boo. With Pattern of Rebirth on Boo now, I will use Minx Skully at zero to make Boo a zero zero, killing him. And when that happens, Pattern of Rebirth will trigger and I can go search for a creature from my deck and put the battlefield. With Protein Hulk out, I'll use the signature from Minx now to make Protein Hulk a 0-0. Killing Protein Hulk, allowing me to go search for creatures with converted mana cost of six or less. The two creatures I'm going to go get, because I had to use my combat phase already, is going to be a Meal the Blast and Dockside Extortionist, for which I create, I believe, for Carlos is two, for Ben is two more, and then for Jordan next year, three, because you have your artifact too. Oh yeah, Stuffy Doll. And so I, this, so four. So I get seven treasures for that. You get eight. 
with the eight though, and with this out, I can now infinitely blink dock side extortion is creating eight treasures each time, in essence netting five because I have to use three of the treasures to use Emil's ability. Whenever I create those treasures now, plus when the dock side comes in, you guys will mill nine times each time. So I have one card that will always get shuffled back into my library. So I'm putting Blaze Steel Colossus as my library. Everything else is milled. And then Jordan and Carlos are completely milled out. Yeah. That is my turn. Untap, upkeep. I'm going to use Hall of Heliod's Generosity. Put an enchantment on top of my deck. I have this cool enchantment that when I play it, put all artifacts and, and auras in my graveyard into play on a creature. So I will put, just for my own sake, Mantle of the Ancients on that top. Go to my draw step. For your draw step, I will flicker Dockside Extortionist again, netting five treasure, and you will mill that card out before your draw. I will die. Untap, draw my library. I'm going to play a land for turn. I will tap them all. I'll have two colorless and seven white. I will use the two colorless to cast Phyrexian Revoker. And I'm going to name Emil the Blessed. I'm going to tap two more and play Glaw Casket. When it enters a battlefield, I exile a target creature and opponent controls. Convert mana cost three or less until last casket leaves the battlefield. And I'll exile Dockside. My remaining five mana, I will use three of it to cast Basil monolith and then i'll use the other two of it to cast spirit of the labyrinth and i will pass the turn untap upkeep phyrexian arena triggers go to draw and die pass the turn untap draw uh, i'm just gonna not do anything because i don't think i need to so i will just pass my turn untap draw lose good game man who knew minx could combo kill when needed go for the eyes boo go for the eyes for game two, Jordan's starting hand includes Mana Vault, Arcane Signet, Mind Stone, Relic Robber, War's Toll, Scalding Tarn, and a Snow-Covered Swamp. Jeff's starting hand includes Carpet of Flowers, Archon of Ameria, Renegade Rallier, Academy Rector, Teamer Sabretooth, Sacred Foundry, and Stomping Grounds. Ben's starting hand includes Soul Ring, Ingenious Smith, Glass Casket, Moon Blessed Cleric, Grandmaster of Flowers, Thran Dynamo, and a Snow-Covered Plains. Carlos' starting hand includes Esper Sentinel, Path to Exile, Arcane Signet, Darksteel Mutation, Crows and Verge, an Island, and a Forest. Here's game two. Untap, upkeep, draw. I will go Mountain into Mana Vault, into Mind Stone, into Arcane Signet. Wow. Go for it, Jeff. Well, we will do Stomping Grounds untapped. So to lose two, a one green to Carpet of Flowers. Carlos, give me some islands, please. And after that, I am done and passing to bed. Draw the turn. I will play a Snow-Covered Plains, and then I will tap it to play Sarah Ascendant, and I'll pass. I'll draw. I'll play a Tapped Crows and Verge and pass. Untap. I will lose one life. I, uh, Mana Vault. Draw. I will play Relic Robber. So it has haste, and whenever Relic Robber deals combat damage to a player, that player creates a 0-1 colorless goblin construct artifact creature token with this creature can't block, and at the beginning of your upkeep, this creature deals one damage to you. Let's hit Mr. Socket to me, Jeff. Second main, I will play a Scalding Tarn tapped and pass the turn. In fact, I'll just go ahead and crack this now so I can go get my crypt tapped. Being my turn, I'm going to do untap. Wonderful new construct in my life, deal damage to me, and then I'm going to go to draw. I'm going to play a Sacred Foundry tapped. Untap, draw for turn. I will go to attack phase. And I'm going to swing at Jordan for six flying lifelink. Second main phase, I'll play a land. I'm going to tap one of those lands for a soul ring. And then I'll tap the other land and soul ring for my commander. And with that, I will pass the turn. Draw for turn. I'm going to play Arcane Signet. And I'll tap that for Esper Sentinel. I'll pass the turn. Untap. I will take a ping. A mana vault. Draw. I will play my castle lock lane and tap five to cast my commander. Carlos, let's come at you this time. Let's share the love. I'll attack you with the two, two. Take it. All right. You get to create that artifact. Goblin token. It's upkeep. It deals one damage to you and it cannot block. Jeff, it's your turn. I'm going to untap. I'm going to take a wonderful another damage from that goblin. Draw a card. Let's go to my attack phase and I'm going to take this wonderful little creature and I'm going to attack Ben. Cards the card is going to trigger. We both get to draw a card. 
Draw. I'm going to play an Exotic Orchard. I'm going to spend three mana to play Archon of Ameria. It's a two, three fire, and each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. And non-basic lands your opponent's control into the battlefield. And I pass to you, Ben. I will untap off turn. I will tap two colorless. Then I'm going to tap a white and Oswald, and I'm going to sack the Soul Ring, searching for something worth two. I'm getting Mycosynth Wellspring when it enters the battlefield and leaves the battlefield. I get to search for a basic land, put it into my hand, and then shuffle my library. I've not played a land for turn, so I'll do so. And then with this two floating and these two, I will cast my one spell this turn, a Thrawn Dynamo. Then I will go to attack phase and I will swing at Jeff. Trigger card is a card. We both draw a card and lose one life. Okay, any, anything, Jeff? Did you take it? I took it. I'm down to 29. All right, I'm down to 51. And with that, I'll pass. <laughs> Uh, I just sneak that in there. Just, just nice. I take a damage from this goblin. Draw for turn. Do you want it to go away or do you want to keep it? I don't want it. <laughs> well, if you attack me with it, I'll eat it with my eagle. I'll attack you with this goblin and Esper Sentinel will go at Ben for one. All right. Trigger, Carlos. Two I will take one. Sorry. Whenever an opponent attacks another one of your opponents. I did attack two opponents. Oh, yeah. So that's two. We both get a draw, uh, too. Oh, and, and lose two. I will. Block. You do block? I'll block you. Yeah, I'll eat your job. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put Dark Steel Mutation on Karazakar. I'm going to play Halimar Depths. Taps. Uh, comes into play. I look at the top three. Uh, rearrange them in any order. I will pass the turn. Upkeep. I will take a damage. Untap. Draw. Land for turn. I am going to start by casting a Parasitic Impetus on your Sarah's Ascendant. Trigger Esper Sentinel. You can draw. Sarah's Ascendant gets plus two plus two and is goaded. Has to attack a creature other than me each turn. And whenever it attacks, you lose two life and I gain two life. I will go to combat and I will attack you, Carlos. Take two. And you get that goblin again. Nice. That's all I can do. I will pass. I'm tapping drawing. I'm going to play Verdict Catacombs. I'm going to pay one to crack it and then go get the land. It will be a forest. I'm just going to play my commander. That'll get me a boo. With the other part of my turn, I will use Mink's ability to make my goblin a 0-0 zero, zero and get rid of him. That being done, I will pass my turn. Draw for turn. I'll tap one and use Oswald's ability to get rid of this wellspring, but when it goes into the graveyard, I can search for a basic land and put it into my hand as well as get a artifact that costs three basal monolith land for turn i will tap for three colorless and then i'll tap for one white and use a colorless i'm going to cast glass casket this will exile target creature and opponent controls with converted costs three or less so archon for sure i'll use two of it so two colorless and one white. We cast Archaeomancer's Map. I will search my library up to two cards, two basic lands, and put them in my hand. I've already played a land for turn, so these go to my hand. And then I'm going to attack phase, and I'm swinging at Jeff. So I lose two, then I gain eight. Second main phase, I will count my card. Seven, I will pass. Untap, upkeep, I'll take a damage, draw for turn. I'm going to play... Uh, command tower. Land for turn. Let's go ahead and play Sterling Grove. So uh, my other enchantments have Shroud. I'm going to play Song of the Dryads on Minx. I will pass the turn. Untap. It does one damage to me. Draw. Land for turn. I'll, Sends I'll, that. Play, I'll play land off Archaeo Mantra's map. I will tap four and cast a vampire dragon immersturm predator whenever it becomes tapped exile up to one target card from a graveyard and put a one one counter on it sacrifice another creature it gains indestructible tap it mr jeff i don't know if you love that, that goblin so i'm gonna give you another one and then for my second main i will cast a royal assassin and then pass the turn gonna do some tapping gonna do some damage from the constructy goblin draw 
I'm gonna play Mana Confluence for my land. I'll play a land off Archaeomancer's map. I'm gonna play a Teamer Sabertooth. Yeah, that's that's my turn. Go, Ben. Untap, draw for turn. I'm gonna tap one and do Oswald's stuff. I'm gonna choose to sacrifice Brawn Dynamo. I'm gonna tap and make three colorless in response. I will then get a five cast. I'm gonna get Gilded Lotus. I'll tap for three more plus three more. So that's nine total plus three more, 12 mana. And I'm gonna attempt to cast Blight Soul Colossus. I'm going to tap for three. I'm gonna play Moon Blessed Cleric. That says when it enters the battlefield, I may search for an enchantment card, reveal it, then shuffle and put it on top. I'm gonna search for Guilty Conscience, and that says whenever enchanted creature deals damage, Guilty Conscience deals that much damage to the enchanted creature, and that goes on top. I'll go to attack phase. Sorry, Jeff, it's coming at you again. Carl just made a deal with the devil, but it's okay. <laughs> he did. I figured you lose oh. two, I gain two. And then I gain eight. I will pass the turn. Take a damage on upkeep, draw a card. I'm going to play Galea, Kindler of Hope. If it's good, I'll look at the top card. I'm going to play Prismatic Vista as my land for turn. Then I'll attack you for zero. You can block it if you want. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pass the turn. I will exile your Thran Dynamo and put my commander back in the command zone. And then this dude will get a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Untap. I'm going to lose one life from my mana. I'm going to do the only thing that kind of gives me a shot here. And... Cast car is a car. Ben, I'm attacking you and I am tapping down your Blight Seal Colossus and goading it. I'll attack you with Relic Robber, Ben. So you will yeah. take two and you'll get a little goblin. So I will just pass and cross my fingers. Untap. Gonna take a fun little damage still from that construct. Raw. Use one of my force to pay one. I'm gonna play a soul ring. I will tap these in the soul ring. Play out Renegade Rallier. I will pass to you, Ben. I will untap. Draw for turn. I will tap four mana. I'll use the Gilded Lotus for three of it and one Snow Covered Plains for one of it. And I'm gonna cast Clark Clan Ironworks. That's for Sentinel Trigger. I will pay it. I'm going to sacrifice some creatures to make mana. So I'll sacrifice this goblin. So that'll make two mana. Then I will tap one to do Oswald's thing. And I'm gonna sack the Clark Clan Ironworks. Stuffy and I'm gonna doll. find something for five. Stuffy Doll. Carlos, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on you. I'll pay one white and I'm gonna put it on Stuffy Doll. I'll respond to that. Okay. And pass Stuffy Doll. No! Okay, so I'll get a land. I'm gonna use both of those colorless and two planes. Now I'm going to cast my boy Grandmaster of Flowers. If he has seven counters, he becomes a 7-7 seven, seven Indestructible Dragon. And then the top, his top plus one is the only one that's relevant. It says I can add one and target creature without first strike, double strike, or vigilance can't attack or block until my next turn. I'm going to uptick him one and I'm going to target one of Jordan's creatures. Which one should I target? His dragon can become indestructible. Yeah, let's do that one. Okay, attack phase. Trigger, you're going to lose two. I'm going to gain two. So we both draw a card and lose a life. And while it's still in the attacking phase, I will tap Royal Assassin and kill your Saris Ascendant. Goodbye, sweet prince. Jeff, what do you got for blockers? Throw Boo and the Renegade Rallyer in front of it. So it's you'll take it's like eight. eight. Combat resolved. I will go ahead and end my turn. End of turn, I'm going to Prismatic Vista. Untap, take a damage from... This goblin, I'll look at the top, yeah, I'll draw a card, I'll look at the top, I'll sacrifice Sterling Grove to ping one, and I'll go get an enchantment on top. I'm going to get Bear Umbra. So it just goes on top. I will then play an island for land for turn, holding priority. I will cast the Bear Umbra onto Galea. I will send Galea at ben for six okay or you can send it at jordan who could only block with his commander oh he can't block with the dragon oh, i uh, can't yeah i'll attack you for six jordan uh, i'll untap my lands look at the top card second main one two three four five and i'm going to cast this aura which is corrupted conscience and i'm going to play it on the dragon that jordan has you have a four four flying dragon That'll be, oh, let me look at the top card. I'll pass the turn. Untap, lose a life, and draw. First card I'm gonna play is Frenzied Salabrute. 
It has haste, 5-4. All creatures can attack your opponents and planeswalker to though those creatures had haste. Let's move to combat. Relic Robber at Jeff. Tar is the car going at you, Ben. The Frenzied Salabrute going at you, Carlos. Jeff, I'm going to tap down your uh, Sabertooth. The car is the car is going to target your Blightsteel Colossus, Ben. Friend's Saddleblade is going to target your commander, Carlos. So I take five? Yeah, I'll take five okay, as sure. well. And I'm going to kill your commander. Okay. I'm going to cast Vindictive Lich, and then I will pass the turn. What does the Lich do? When it dies, choose an opponent. Each mode must choose a different target. Target player sacrifices a creature. Target player discards two cards. Target player loses five life. At the end of your turn, I will spend two mana to blink one of the goblins and turn to my hand, which will then get rid of it. I'm going to attack, take one from one of the little things. I'm at four, by the way, now. Mm. So everything's a forest. Yeah, you have a Maya. I got some forests. I'm going to play a meal the blessed. I will pass and say go. Uh, you have to attack with your saber tooth. Yeah, I will attack Ben. Trigger, draw a card, lose a life. I'll just take the what, like two damage? That's four. 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 Oh, yeah. four damage. No problem. <laughs> yep. Okay. My turn? Yep, your turn. All right, then tap. Go off to. I'm going to tap my Gilded Lotus for three white. I'll use two of it, so I'll have one floating. And I'm going to cast Ingenious Smith. It says, when it enters the battlefield, I can look at the top four cards in my library. And I can reveal an artifact from among them and put it into my hand. And then put the rest on the bottom. Whenever I play an artifact creature, it gets plus one, plus one. But it only triggers once per turn. I will reveal pyre of heroes it says pay to and tap to sacrifice a creature then i can search my library for a creature card that shares a creature type with it and has converted mana cost to equal one plus its cost just like uh birth pod i will use this one floating and i'll tap one more and i'm gonna sack uh do you pay one for esper sentinel oh that's right i forgot about that I use the remaining mana from here, and then these one here, and then one extra to pay for Esper Sentinel. I will then tap two more. I will tap to sacrifice a creature. I'm going to sacrifice Moon Blessed Cleric. And so I'm going to get Palace Jailer. When Palace Jailer comes into the battlefield, wow. I become the monarch. When he enters the battlefield, I exile target creature and opponent controls until an opponent becomes the monarch. Oh, Royal Assassin, because he can blow up go goaded stuff, right? A anything yeah. that's tapped. Yeah, I'm going to exile that. And then I will go to attack phase. And I have to swing with Blightsteel Colossus at Jeff. Well, we both draw a card and lose one life. I mean, blocking is going to be pointless, so I might as well go out with a bang. Uh -huh. For one red, I'm going to destroy the aura on the dragon. Second main phase, I'm going to recast my commander for four. I'm going to do Grandmaster of Flowers on now that dragon does not have an effect anymore, right? Does no, it does not. Mean it's still the only thing with flying. I'll do the dragon. It cannot attack or block. And then since I'm the monarch, at the beginning of my end step, I will draw a card. And I will pass the turn. Take a damage, draw a card, look at the top. I will play Hall of Heliod's Generosity. It's my land for turn. I'm going to play Enlightened Tutor. Any responses? If not, I'll search nope. for something. I'm going to go with the debut of Cauldra Complete. Cauldra Complete goes on top, and I'm going to cast it with Galea's ability. It will come into play, and I'll attach it to Galea. I'll go to my attack step, and I'll declare Galea as my attacker, going at Ben. Two attack triggers will first stack it so that uh, Bear Umbra untaps, and then we draw. Draw and live a life. Look at the top. All right, Ben. We have a 11-11 Vigilance Commander. He also has Trample for Strike, Indestructible, Haste, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a creature, exile that creature. I'll take 11. Commander damage. Yep. Then I become the Monarch. Uh, top card. Yeah, I'll cast that. It is a Utopia Sprawl. And put it on planes. And look at the top. Chris, what was that? Uh, Utopia Sprawl. It has to enchant a forest. Oh, you're right. Sorry. Oh, I have to choose a color too, right? Let's just... I choose a white. After my lands run tapped, this was already tapped, I cast one for the Utopia Sprawl. Now one, two, three, four for Hammer of Nazan. 
hammer is on or another equipment enters the battlefield in your control, you may attach that equipment to target creature you control. I will put that on the Esper Sentinel. He's now a 3-1 indestructible. Let's look at the top. I cast all that glitters. He gives it flying, right? No, just plus one plus one for each artifact and enchantment I control, which is seven. Putting that on Esper Sentinel. Look at the top. No way. That's crazy. I have one blue left. I'll pay that one blue for my one blue enchantment aqueous form. I'll put that on Galea. Unblockable? Yeah. Wow. Unblockable and scry one. And look at the top. And that's the turn. Draw a card for Monarch. Untap. Lose a life. This is what I will do because I also need to start drawing some cards. Vindictive Lich is going to come at you, Ben. And the Relic Robber will come at you, Carlos. Trigger, trigger. I will target your Blight Steel with my Vindictive Lich, and then Relic Robber is going to tap down your Sentinel. Not my Gabo? Sure, I'll tap down your Gabo. Take two. I'll take four. Let's make this even more interesting. Vengeful Ancestor. Flying, three, four. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, go target creature. Whenever I go to creature attacks, it deals one damage to its controller. That one I will target your Esper Sentinel on. And then I want to leave this up. I will pass the turn and draw for being the Monarch. I will untap. I will draw for turn. You create a second Goblin, Carlos. Oh, yeah. First, I'm going to make it so that a target creature without first strike, double strike, or then vigilance cannot attack. I'm going to target Esper Sentinel, cannot attack or block. I'm going to tap Gilded Lotus. I'm going to use two of it to cast Mage Rites Stone. And that says I can pay one and tap it to untap target creature that has an activated ability with tap and its cost, AKA my commander. So I will now use this one mana. I'm gonna tap Oswald Fiddlestorm. And I'm gonna sack Basalt Monolith to find something with mana cost of four. And I will find Solemn Simulacron. It will come in and when it comes in, it's going to put a land onto the battlefield tap. I'm going to not shuffle yet because I'm simply going to pay one to tap, to untap Oswald. And then I'll pay another one to tap him. And I'm Sorry, gonna you played a non-creature or have they all been creatures? Oh, I did. I paid one non-creature. You have to pay like 11 unless you want me to draw a card. <laughs> Sorry, I missed that, so you can have it. I'm gonna do my Oswald Fiddlestorm thing with Solemn Simulacron, so he dies, I'll get a draw a card. I'll do that after I find Koldotha Forge Master. What did that do? This says I can tap it to sacrifice three artifacts. Oh no. To search my library for an artifact card and put it onto the battlefield. So I'm shuffling my library. I draw off for the Solemn Simulacron, go into the graveyard. I will now pay two mana, and I will play Lightning Graves, and I'm gonna equip it to the Forge Master. I'm going to tap it. I'm going to sack three artifacts. I'm going to sack Archaeomancer's map, glass casket, and... Sure, I don't care. And so I'm going to do you care, it. Jordan? No. So it's just going to come right back out. This is a new one, though. Everything else works out. I'm going to put... Lightning Greaves on the Colossus. And there's no reason for me not to swing this at Jordan. So, Jordan, I'm going to attack you with my Blight Steel. That's my entire combat. And I'm going to cast Stinging Study. Draw X cards and lose X life, or X is the... CMC of my commander, so I will draw five. So that resolves. I will block Frenzied Salabrute, and I will take seven Infect. Second main phase, I will pay two, and I'm gonna tap Pyre of Heroes. I'm going to sacrifice Ingenious Smith, so I can search for a human or an artificer with mana cost three. I'm gonna search for Ranger Captain of Eos. When Ranger Captain of Eos enters the battlefield, I can search for a creature card with one or zero. And I'm going to look for Mother of Runes. So I will show it and put it in my hand. It doesn't say you may with Esper Sentinel. You cast that spell, Jordan. I did. So do you want to pay 11? I can't. Yeah. I'm going to play Spirits of the Labyrinth for two mana. That says that players cannot draw more than one card each turn. And with that, I'm going to pass. I draw for turn. I take two damage from these two. I'm going to play Fabled Passage. And I'm going to crack it. Go get a basic forest I look at the top i'll pay a green and i'm going to play wild growth on this plains i look at the top i will cast for four control magic the targeting i think i have to target your predator jordan my dragon yeah look at the top I will play Shield of Cauldra. With Hammer Mizan's ability, I'm going to equip it to the Predator. I will cast a Findhorn Elves. I'm going to put Ethereal Armor 
on Esper Sentinel. At that, I will pass the turn. I'm going to tap Royal Assassin and kill your commander, Ben. Untap. And this time, I don't want to take any damage, so I'm actually going to pay the four to untap Mana Vault. Untap everything and draw. I'm going to play my land for turn, and I need to go to combat. So I will attack with Vengeful Ancestor. That's going to have double go triggers for it. I'll attack with Vindictive Lich. I will tap down your palace. Okay. I think I'm actually going to tap down my dragon. Oh, dang it. I'm going to have your commander attack and goad it. A flyer is coming my way. I can't block. How much damage? Just three. Took four. And then what did you exile with me tapping down the predator? Is it whenever it's tapped? And it becomes tapped. Exile up to one target card from a graveyard. Put a 1-1 counter on it. Ben, what combo pieces do you have in there? Croc, Clang, Ironworks. Sure, let's exile that. Second main, tap three, and I'm going to pay 11 life for Toxic Deluge. Galea will die. So they all, um, everything gets minus 11, minus 11? Everything yep. gets minus 11, minus 11. Everything dies. I'm going to choose to put my commander in the command zone. Blight still gets shuffled in. No, it does not. Trigger on the stack. Okay. Two, three, four, five. Okay. Oh, sorry. Do you pay 30 so I can draw for Toxic Deluge? Okay. Blight still Colossus, trigger on the stack. Thrilling Encore. Onto the battlefield under your control, all creatures in all graveyards that were put there from the battlefield this turn. You get a Fintorm Elf for me. Oh, sorry. When Vindictive Lich dies, Carlos, I'm going to make you lose five life. Because then when Palace Jailer comes in, I can exile it, right? Doesn't uh, have Shroud or anything? Nope. So I get all these beautiful, beautiful things back. I get all of Ben's beautiful things back. I can go search my library for a creature card with converted mana cost zero, one or zero. I don't believe I have any, so I'm not going to. Then when Palace Jailer comes in, I'll become the monarch and I'm going to exile your dude until you become the monarch, but you have no creatures. At least put like, some upside down cards for each creature or something. Yeah. How many do you guys have? You got one for me. Well, you got five for me. So I will discard a mountain and death tyrant. And I'm going to pass the turn. Well, that was a hell of a turn. That was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a killer. Yeah. All right. Yeah, he has lightning greaves. I guess you have some blockers. I also have on, on tap blockers. I also have this bad boy. He's two okay. flyers, though. For now. So at the beginning of your upkeep, Ben, I am yeah. going to sacrifice Ranger Captain of Eos to prevent my opponents from casting any non creature spells. All right, I'm going to play land for turn, pay six mana. I'm going to cast my. Command. I'm gonna equip him to the boots. I will tap one to do his thing, and I'm going to sacrifice Pyre of Heroes, and I'm gonna get something that costs three. And I'm gonna get sculpting. Steel. So you actually get a, we need to clarify something. Blightstone Colossus actually just goes back into your library because it says if it would, it's a replacement effect. It never goes there for you to reanimate. Yeah, Got, gotcha. It'll get shelved in. I'm gonna get sculpting steel still. And I'm going to copy an artifact on, on the battlefield. And I'm going to copy Cauldra Complea. I'm going to pay one and tap one to untap my commander. Is it a target? Your guy is Shroud, so you have to move it first. Oh. So you have to move it to your germ, then do it, then move it back. Or... Ooh, so. so that captain's in your graveyard, the one that you have up there. Oh, yeah. I'm going to remove the boots. So your commander's still tapped. Yep, still tapped. Boots are off on the yep. germ. I will now pay one to tap my Mage Rite Stone to untap my commander. My creatures do not have haste, so I can't use Royal Assassin. I will re-equip the boots. I will pay one to do his action. And I will sacrifice Gilded Lotus. I'm going to search for something that costs six, and I'm going to get God Pharaoh Statue. It says that spells my opponent's cast mm. cost two extra. And oh, and you better kill him, because otherwise I can't kill him. No, I would, trust me, I'm going to try. And then at the beginning of my end step, each opponent loses one life. Yeah, that, that drops me to one. I'm going to bump up Grandmaster Flowers. Jordan, I'm going to pick your, one of your guys that does not have Vigilance, Double Strike, or First Strike. That's pretty much everyone. I'll do the one that would just deal the most damage. That's the 4-1. So that guy cannot attack a block. And then this guy is now a 7-7 seven, seven indestructible dragon. There's so much going on. And I will cast Archon of Emeria. So I will pass the turn. At the end of my turn, you both take one. Tap upkeep. I'll draw for turn. What does the Grandmaster of Flowers do again? He is now a 7-7 seven, seven indestructible dragon with flying. I'm going to cast Persuasion and take control of Grandmaster of Flowers. Not great. <laughs> uh, no, you're not. Deflecting Swat. If I let it resolve, what are you going to target with that plus ability? His flyer. Yeah, go ahead and take it. Yeah, I'll target your Archon of Emeria. 
I'm gonna play a Terramorphic Expanse. It's land for turn, pass turn. I'm gonna untap in my upkeep. I guess I am paying four to untap it. So go ahead and draw one, two, three. Activate this, sacrifice Mana Vault, the three, five creature, and the Arcane Signet. I now yep. get to search for Whip of Erebos. I have three mana, and this isn't casting the spell. This just returns it to the battlefield tapped. Ben, I am coming at you with everything. And then when Vengeful Ancestor attacks, I'm going to target you, Carlos. I'm going to target your Grandmaster. I think I'll attack with the Fenhor Elves as well. How much are you doing? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then when it becomes tapped, I get to put a counter on it, so 15, and I get to exile something from a graveyard. Carlos, do you have any more of those enchant things? I have this infect one, yeah. Okay, let's get rid of that. Uh, okay. Actually, so you target it. I'll Terramorphic Expanse, and then after that I'll put it on top. Uh, yeah, that is 15 coming at you. I'll take it. We're taking it all. I gain 15 life. Land for turn will be my Bajuka Bog, and uh, Carlos, I'm going to target you. Pass the turn. John, I'm going to tap my treasure bolt. I'm going to float one mana. So I'm casting Torpor Orb. I'm going to pay one to do my Oswald thing with it. I'm going to search for something with three. I'm going to get a thousand year elixir. The boots are off. And now I kill your commander in response. That's that. I will pass the turn. I'm going to sacrifice Vindictive Lich to my Predator to make you lose five life, Ben, and Carlos to make you sacrifice a creature. I know what you're drawing, Carlos. I think I just cast Nazan. I'm gonna do Helm of Cauldra. I will equip Nazan with his hammer. Oh, we each took a damage at his end step, right? Yeah. I will play a land just for fun. Pass the turn. Untap, bro. Play a mountain for the turn. I'll cast Arzakar. Let's go to combat. We will attack with my two flyers. Trigger Kar Zakar and trigger here. So I will exile the artifact that lets you untap stuff. So this is eight flying. Kar Zakar is going to tap down your one flyer, Ben. Nasty, dude. Nasty. For Wait, Carlos. Picking it all last time. Oh, yeah. You ha I'm dead. You can just tap my dude. I can't just tap your dude. Yeah, I attack with everything and then I kill you. I gain all the life. Unreal. Nice. Well, Goading is even better when one of your opponents is playing a Voltron deck and the other one has an 11-11 Trample Indestructible Infect creature. Yeah, that was a slugfest of a game, but super fun. All right, well, what did you think of the Diamond Commander League Season 3? We had a ton of fun. We learned so much, made some huge advances, and we're that much more excited for Season 4. We've actually already recorded some of Season 4 at FanX. It's in-person gameplay. It's going to be super cool with some awesome backgrounds as well as great games and great decks. And I'm really excited to bring it to you. As always, there's a number of ways that you can show your support if you're really enjoying our content. The easiest one is just to smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and also come check us out over on Patreon. We have a $2 Ronin tier where you get access to our Discord, monthly game nights, and a bunch more. We'd love to have you come join the kingdom. And with that, thanks so much for watching, and keep it nerdy.